This is Robert Demers for Khan Men here at the Fantasia International Film Festival, and I'm here with the men of Black Fawn Films. I have with me Chad Archibald, the director slash co-writer in the middle there, uh, Cody Callahan, the co-writer here on the right, and Chris Giro, the producer on the left. How are you all doing today? Good. Good. Good, good. We just uh, pretty much stayed up all night and drove from Guelph uh, to Montreal and uh, got here around 9 a.m. and have just uh, kind of been getting everything in order and haven't slept in about 30 hours. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to start off by saying that. <laughs> First off, can you tell our audience a little bit about your film? Uh, sure. We did, um, we did a movie called Any Social last year that Cody directed, and uh, we premiered at Fantasia almost exactly a year ago. And after that, uh, we worked with Breakthrough Entertainment again, the same studio, and we developed, we want to develop a, kind of a, an 80s, 90s kind of iconic supernatural villain, like a Freddy Krueger or a Jason. I, I mean, it's just, they just kind of seem to disappear from horror. Like, uh, like we, wanted to make a, we wanted to make a movie that, like, you know, McFarlane would make a toy from, you know? Like someone that's, that's like a memorable villain with a nice juicy background. So we... Uh, we sat down and started throwing around ideas, and uh, it just kind of came together really well, and that's how it started, The Drownsman. The Drownsman is having its world premiere here at the festival tomorrow. How excited all are you? Uh, we're ecstatic. Like, we've done, we premiered Annie Social here last year, uh, which is a dream come true for me as a producer, and uh, to premiere our second film here, it's ecstatic. It's just kind of surreal. Like, Fantasia is one of the biggest film festivals in the world, so for me personally, it's just a surreal experience. Yeah, we've uh, we love this festival. We we premiered a, a few films here. Uh, the last film that I directed was Never Lost, and uh, we premiered that here in 2010. And uh, I mean, every every time we come, it's uh, it's better and better. It's uh, it's bigger and bigger. And I mean, the only the only bummer is that we can't come for the whole thing because it's so long. Or well, we're shooting. Or because we're shooting right now. <laughs> <laughs> what was the inspiration to make this film? Uh, all three of us, pretty much. We all grew up kind of watching horror films of the 80s and 90s. And I think um, there's just so much character in those films um, that we just we just wanted to, to make something that, you know, our 10-year-old selves would, would want to watch and, and something that would kind of fit into that era. So I think that was, uh, that was the biggest inspiration for it, you know, Nightmare on Elm Streets and and things like that, but also kind of meshing some of, a little bit of like the kind of stuff from recent horror. So it's a little bit of a mesh of everything, but I mean, I, I think the general inspiration was, um, you know, making something that would scare our 10 year old selves. When I was young, I, uh, I was always afraid of water. I learned how to swim later in life. I still suck at it, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so this, uh, so the idea of kind of creating a, a villain that is based on, you know, water and hydrophobia and, uh, you know, <clears throat> the concept of, of just being terrified of, of water is just such an extreme. A lo another, uh, another part of kind of what, what drew it all together was um, we did a ton of research on rabies, which used to actually be called like hydrophobia. Yeah. And people who actually get rabies, like humans, they uh, they develop this fear of water, you can't, like you can't swallow it. Yeah, like no. if you um, if you look online, there's all these videos of, you know, kids with rabies in, in other countries and stuff that, you know, they would go up and pour water in front of them and they'd just be terrified. They'd cry and scream and um, it gets so bad that they can't even actually drink it. They won't even drink water and, and part of rabies is actually dehydration. Um, so with this character, we wanted to kind of you know have our have. Our, our main, our main character, Madison, we wanted to give her hydrophobia and kind of like develop this, this kind of uh, villain around it, but also all of her friends just, just think that she has like an actual mental fear of it and that there is nothing to, nothing to fear. Um, but obviously, once they try to resolve that, it gets worse and they realize that there is something to fear. How was it designing a iconic figure like the Drownsman for this film and to, like you said to make it like a Freddy Krueger like figure well I think there was really two elements of designing the Drownsman there was the Drownsman himself 
um, which Chad and, and the Gore brothers kind of worked on our, our special effects people to design, and, and Ryan Barrett, who plays the Drownsman. The three of them really kind of created this character, but a huge element of the Drownsman is his lair, is this, is this basement kind of lair that he lives in. So I feel like the, the two elements, his, his set element and his kind of body movement element, and we built his lair from the ground up. So we built it in a farm kind of in the Mount Forest region, Mount Forest, Ontario, and our production designer, Vince, built this massive basement layer set from scratch from the ground up, and we dug holes, and we had these water tanks and basins and things in it. So I feel like those are the two iconic, kind of like how Freddy has the boiler room, the Drownsman has this basement layer. So I think Chad can touch base more on the actual Drownsman character, but I just wanted to give a shout out to the, uh, the actual set in which he lives. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, as far as the backstory for for the Drownsman, we just wanted to do something. It's it's so much fun. Like that was the best part of writing the script. I think was um, us I sitting. Think at, at one point, there was a draft that had like twenty pages of a backstory. Yeah, it was and like insane. cops going through in the nineteen seventies, yeah. and and it's so hard because you can only put so much in. And you know, we did a ton of research on on you know the Freddies and the Jasons and and whatnot, and kind of their backstories you know over over the whole franchise and I mean there's just so much fun with it like Freddy was the bastard child of a thousand maniacs like it's just it's so absurd it's just like that just can't happen <laughs> but it sounds so awesome so I mean that's what's so much fun about creating these characters is that you can kind of do anything like the the basic kind of idea behind the Drownsman was that he was born or when when his mother who was this huge obese woman she became pregnant and she didn't even realize and it was and she was pregnant for over two years. So, um, as a baby, the Drownsman was was uh, it was basically a two-year-old child when he was born, and his mother died during childbirth, and his father always blamed him for it. Um, so he lived this horrible life growing up, and the only time that he can remember, because he was old enough in the womb, that he was comfortable was being underwater with the sound of like a, a woman's heartbeat. So, kind of as he grew older and was kind of like detached from society. Um, he started kidnapping these women and bringing them down into his lair and holding them underwater just to feel that sensation of being in the womb again, being underwater and feeling the heartbeat of a woman. So, I mean, that's, there's, it, it goes on and on. And like me and Cody discussed, you know, a million things that aren't even in the film as far as his backstory. But I mean, it's just, it's so much fun to create a character with no real limitations. Prequel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was the original opening to the uh, to the movie was the mother giving birth, yeah. and it was uh, it was just it was actually too gross, and the people everyone who read it the studio and everyone um, they kind of read it and they were like all right that's just, just a little much because like the, the baby came out with like long fingernails and everything right it's, anyways <laughs> maybe a prequel yeah. a really grotesque prequel what was each of your most memorable moment from during the production. I have a hundred memorable memories. Which the best ones I, I, think, I think one of the unique memories for me personally is that we shot in, in we shot a scene in my old high school. Oh, we used like the water, uh, the pool there, and we shot some scenes underwater. And I've never gone scuba diving or, or, or worked physically underwater before until this film. And, and Chad and I actually got to, to learn how to scuba dive for this film. And we got to we got to scuba dive um, as the actresses did some stunts in the pool. So, to me, I think that was just cool because I've always wanted to scuba dive, and um, I, it was just kind of this cool moment that we got to like a crash course in scuba diving. So I thought that that was fun for me personally. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, every day had its challenges because every day there was a new weird water element that we had, uh, some sort of gag that we had to try to pull off and. The, the entire film, like, you know, we we realized, you know, water is very difficult to deal with. And so many people, you know, they always say in film, you don't use kids, you don't use um, kids, animals, animals, or you don't shoot with water because it's just unpredictable. So, uh, so of course, we dove into a movie where water's in every single scene. And uh, just the challenges, the, the physics of it, it was just every single day was a mind-blowing challenge of... of trial and error and I mean there was just so many obstacles in this film that uh, that we had to deal with that uh, there was days where I was like is this act are we actually gonna film? <laughs> is this gonna finish are we gonna is this gonna happen or are we just actually going to never leave the drowns and glare um, 
but I mean there are, there is um, without giving too many things away from from the movie I think some of the best parts were uh, were the gags in the in the water in the basement there were so many kind of underground tanks and and above ground tanks and all these weird elements involving water that are just so unique to see you know we kind of we drew a little bit of the visual style from movies like The Cell and you know The Ring and other movies like that that, that do deal with water. Uh, we did a ton of research on films like that, and uh, I mean, there's just so much. There's such a beauty captured underwater, just the movement and the the visuals that you can kind of achieve with it. So that wasn't one moment, but <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a series of moments it throughout the entire shoot. But <laughs> yeah, encompassing moments. Yeah. <laughs> I was prepping another movie, so I actually was only on set um, five or six days, but Chad would call me every other day and sort of tell me the craziness of shooting with water, and I, I went out, I think the very first day I got there, and I was there for 45 minutes, and every time he would call me at night, I'd be like, okay, it, it can't be that crazy, it can't be that hard, and I was there for 45 minutes, and after 45 minutes, I've never been so drained. <laughs> and so exhausted just just watching like I was sitting at a monitor and I was like hyperventilating it's <laughs> so intense the amount of water that would go into this yeah, and the amount of stress and and just to pull off like simple scenes it's pretty uh it's pretty incredible hats off to, <laughs> to these two guys and I remember there was a moment when uh, we were up in this kind of above ground tank and I was standing there with this giant bucket thing of water and we were trying to do this just a little cutaway kind of thing and it was just like such a mess and I'm soaked and she's boiling water in the kitchen and like it was just like insanity and I remember looking over at Cody and he's just looking up at me and he goes dude I totally get it <laughs> I've been here for 40 minutes I totally get it this is insane yeah. <laughs> so uh, we, that was my moment. Uh, recently, you, you've signed a eight-picture deal with Breakthrough Entertainment. Uh, what's the future looking like for Black Fawn Films? Yeah, so we, we recently just signed um, the eight-picture deal. We've got um, two greenlit. Can't say what they are, but we can say that, can't we? We've got two films greenlit that are going to go. Um, can we? Oh, okay, yeah. Well, I mean, we're Sorry, doing we're, we're doing antisocial too, um, so we start shooting that in a month. Twenty days. Twenty days. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh my God. I know. Um, so we're gonna shoot that first, and then we've got two movies after that that have just been greenlit. But um, we'll shoot uh, we'll shoot four more pictures this year. Yeah. Antisocial plus three more by movies the end of this year. year. By the end of, by the end of 2014. But I think so. yeah, black for Black Fawn, it's um, it's gonna be a great place for sort of um, younger and first time directors as like a a good place to start, like a stepping stone, kind of. And sort of, we've been bringing people in and sort of helping them with their scripts and sort of nurturing them on the way and, you know, giving people a shot that, I don't know, you wouldn't normally get. And it gives us such a wide variety to do such different type of genre films. And, and you know, with Annie Social, comparing Annie Social to The Drownsman, they couldn't be two more different films in, in, within the genre. You know, Annie Social is so technology-based and Drownsman being so water-based, it's going to be really interesting to see the different kind of genres and different characters and stuff that we create over these eight pictures plus antisocial too so yeah like i mean i think we're we're excited because we love filmmaking it's um it's been you know we got the bug you know a long time ago i think all of us did and uh just the idea that that we have the budgets and that we have um you know such an amazing studio behind us and they're allowing us to just basically stay on set and keep making films with, you know, some of the some of the huge upcoming talent in Canada. It's uh, it's it's mind blowing. We're pumped, excited. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and finally, for the people who want to see Drownsman for themselves, oh, what kind of release we'll be looking at in the future? When does this air? You, you'll, you'll, you'll hear at the Drownsman screening. <laughs> That's when we're announcing it. Well, thank you so very much for talking with us, and I wish you all the best of luck for tomorrow's world premiere. Thank you very much. Thank you.